In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a charged particle that's moving in between a capacitor. And as it moves through this electric field, it's going to have an exiting velocity and a specific angle at which it's leaving that capacitor as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our values and use a bunch of different concepts to figure out the final velocity and the angle. First of all, um, conceptually, what's going on is we have an electron that has an initial velocity of 9 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And as it's moving to the right, its horizontal motion is going to stay constant because there are no forces in the horizontal direction going left and right. Um, but because the electric field is applying an electric force in the vertical direction and for the negatively charged particle, it's going to be pushing it up against the direction of the electric field. Um, and that force is going to cause it to accelerate in the vertical direction. So this is similar to ideas that apply to projectile motion, where an object has a constant horizontal motion and an accelerated vertical motion because the force of gravity is pulling in the vertical direction. So we want to take the horizontal and vertical components and eventually piece them together. Um, like this using some vector addition and that's going to give us a final resultant vector which is going to be our final answer of the velocity that it exits the capacitor. So we already have one of those. We already have the Vx, the velocity in the x direction, which is 9 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. Now we need to find the final velocity in the y direction. Now, just like with kinematics, you need to have three known variables in order to solve for a unknown variable, which is our VF. So if we were to take a look at the different acceleration formulas, um, we would possibly be able to use this, and we could possibly use this formula as well. Now, when I analyze both of those, um, I have the VI actually in the Y direction. Uh, the VI in the Y direction is zero because it doesn't have any vertical velocity to start off with. So I do have this VI. And for the first one, I need an acceleration and a time. For the second one, I, have, I need the acceleration and delta Y. So either way, I'm going to need the acceleration. So just basically, what is your preference? Do you want to find the time or the delta Y? Um, I can already see that time is going to be a little bit easier, uh, in my opinion, because we can find the time using some x variables. So in the x direction, we have velocity equals the delta x over t. And we know the velocity already is 9 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. The delta x is this length of the plate, which is 5 centimeters. So if we convert that to meters, we're going to be dividing 5 by 100, which would make it 0 0.05 meters. And then we can go ahead and solve for time fairly easily. We can do a little cross multiplying, have those two switch spots. And then our time is going to come out to be 5.56 times 10 to the negative ninth seconds. So we're going to want to go ahead and use Newton's second law to find our acceleration. Our acceleration equals the force over the mass. And we're going to want to substitute out that F for QE because we know Q, the charge of an electron, which is a constant. We know E, the electric field that was given to us in the problem. And we also know the mass of electron as well. So let's go ahead and plug in those values. We have... Q, which is the charge of an electron. And I'm going to put the magnitude of the charge. It's normally negative, but I'll just go ahead and put 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. And we have 3,750 newtons per coulomb for the E field. And then for the mass, the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. And then from there, we have our acceleration. 
our acceleration comes out to be 6.59 times 10 to the 14th meters per second squared. All right, now we won't have the two things that we wanted. We had the acceleration and we have the time and then we can plug it into this formula now. So let me go ahead and clear a little space. All right, so I went ahead and took our two answers that we just solved for and slid them over here to the left. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug them into our formula, which is the final velocity equals the initial velocity. Remember, we don't have any velocity in the vertical direction to start off with. And then plus the acceleration of 6.59 times 10 to the 14th times our time 5.56, whoops, 5.56 times 10 to the negative ninth. And that gives us our final velocity in the y direction of 3.66 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. So I went ahead and got the next velocity I needed to get my final resultant velocity. So we were looking for our vy, which we just got. And let's go ahead and put that in here. 3.66 times 10 to the sixth. So we can go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem and then take the square root of 3.66 times 10 to the sixth squared plus the 9 times 10 to the 6th squared. So basically just using Pythagorean theorem, and then that will give us the final resultant velocity, which comes up to 9.72 times 10 to the 6th. So that is the first part of our final answer. So let's go ahead and squeeze that in here as well. And then we're going to go ahead and find this angle theta right over here. So we can go ahead and just use um, any trig function. I'm just going to go ahead and use the inverse tangent function. And I'm going to take the inverse tangent of 3.66 over 9. The reason why I'm doing that is tangent is opposite over adjacent and then both of them are times 10 to the sixth so those would drop off so i've just used the number in the front so 3.66 divided by 9 um, will be suffice to give us that angle once we plug that into our calculator we're going to get 22.13 degrees as our final angle that the electron exits the capacitors so to sum things up if you're working out a problem like this, you want to use the horizontal and vertical components. The horizontal component is going to be constant and the vertical component is going to be uh, a product of some acceleration. And the acceleration is due to this E field. And once you combine those two vectors, you'll get a final resultant velocity. That will be your final exiting velocity. And if you want to find an angle at which it leaves, then you can go ahead and use an inverse um, trig function, and then you can go ahead and find that angle. Hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.